All right, so let's talk about how the marketing landscape for spa professionals has completely changed. And if you're not on social media or building a social media presence, then you need to watch this video. But first, if you're new here, my name is Ayana. I'm a licensed massage therapist, esthetician, and spa owner. And I make videos about business strategy for spa professionals. And as the title suggests, we're gonna be talking about some tips for your spa when it comes to social media presence and how this is gonna work for you when it comes to marketing. So the first tip when it comes to building a social media presence for your spa is to have your content pillars. So if you don't know what content pillars are, think of these as categories for your content that you reuse over and over and over again. Example of this is educational content, content that promotes a service, content that is personal, content that is vulnerable. These are different types of content pillars, but there are three content pillars that every single spa professional should have in their practice hands down no questions asked the three pillars that every spa professional should have are before and afters service demos and testimonials all right so let's talk about before and afters so I kind of already know what you're thinking you're thinking oh well I do traditional massage there's no way I can show a before and after of a massage session but this is where you get to be creative so on social media I'm also seeing trends of massage therapists who will show the before and after of when they treat let's say one one side bilaterally versus the other side. So let's say they show the shoulders. They'll show how uneven the shoulders were before and after massage therapy. You can also get creative with this depending on the type of massage you do or the type of spa service that you do. And you can show before and after cupping or just something that is visual that represents the before of when they get a massage and afterwards. So we all know with cupping, you know, you have these cupping marks on you. That's like the blood flow that's rising to the surface. It's really cool to have have that visual and so you can create content of this to make sure you ask them for their consent for photos and videos but go ahead and try to get before and afters so how I do this in my practice I do post-op lymphatic drainage massage and so I like to show before and after when a client comes in when they're more swollen they're inflamed even their skin texture is different versus afterwards where they're a lot more slim there's less fluid in their body and you can literally see a difference in how they look so I do this to show what's possible when a potential client chooses me for their post-op recovery and chooses us for their post-op lymphatic drainage massage. Now, before I move on to the next pillar, if you are interested or you're curious about if lymphatic drainage is right for you, if you're still figuring out your niche, I do have a guide for you that's gonna be in the description box below. So you can go ahead and get that for free. So let's move on to the next pillar. So the next pillar, we have service demos. So show demonstrations of you doing services. So I have a whole video on this. I'll actually link it above where we talk about how to sell your services. But essentially I talk about how you need to show and not tell. Video is gonna be super powerful for social media. I mean, think about how pretty much every social media platform has turned to video in order to showcase content and share your stories and share what's going on. Like even Instagram it started off being something for people who wanted to show their photos, but now it's all about reels, it's all about video, Videos. And so something really powerful for you in your spa practice is to show videos of you actually doing services. So this is demonstrating what it looks like to do a service. I think this is so important for spa professionals because it's very difficult to describe the tangible results that we get from things like massage therapy, body work, even facial services. It's like describing massage to someone who's never had a massage. It's very, very difficult because everyone has their own experience. And it's just one of those things that you need to experience for yourself. Really what you need to do is bring them in and show them what it's like to have a service. So one of the ways that you can do this and get your prospective clients to come in and be interested in your service is to go ahead and make videos of what your service is like. So if you do cupping, you should be having videos showing that you do cupping. You should have videos showing that you do a pregnancy massage or you work with this type of clientele or you do this special service. If you use Use any special equipment or tools in your practice you really want to demonstrate that because some people will go to your website or your booking site and they'll read about your services but they might have questions so of course get consent from people that you're getting videos from to create that content and you can work on friends acquaintances co-workers family to, in order to get those startup videos so go ahead and do that and another cool thing about this is that you can just simply use your phone like any type of 
content I've ever put out there, I've always used my phone. I do have this expensive camera I would never ever use, but I'm always using my phone. So just use your phone, use what you have. If you need a better quality phone, go ahead and do that, but don't let that stop you from creating video content because people want to see it. Now, something I recommend when you're showing your services, do try to steady it. Don't try to just use your hand, try to get something like a tripod or setting your phone up with some books or whatever you might have to do. I've definitely done that before, but try to make sure it's quality content with what you have. So don't feel like you have to go out and buy the most expensive phone to start taping content of your services. Just get a tripod, your phone, and and just press record and you can turn those bits and pieces of your service into different pieces of content so you could take the same video cut it up in different pieces you can use apps such as CapCut if you're using your phone you can also use iMovie which is also on the phone to cut up pieces you can also use Canva Canva is a great tool for cutting up videos and turning it into content that can be repurposed for Instagram TikTok, Facebook YouTube all that stuff so definitely show your service show demonstrations of what it's like to get your service and show what it looks like to be in the treatment room with you. All right, last but certainly not least is your testimonials. So testimonials are extremely powerful when it comes to your social media presence. This is what we call in the business world kind of like your social proof. So you're proving that you're able to get really good results and solve a problem for your clients. So some ways that you can get client testimonials is taking screenshots directly from Google this is what I do. I take screenshots directly from Google showing what clients are saying about me and my team in my spa. You can also get screenshots of what they say on Facebook, what they say, you know, if you have any other way that you collect testimonials, you can get videos of people raving about you or saying great things about you. You don't have to show people's faces. You can actually get audio clips and then turn that into a piece of content for your Instagram or Facebook or other social media accounts that you might have, such as TikTok or YouTube. Now, if you don't have reviews for your business yet or maybe you haven't started your business yet something that you can do and something I wish that I would have done is even ask people who were in your massage school or your esthetician school ask them to review your business on Facebook on Google even just video testimonials audio clip testimonials whatever you can to get that feedback so you can display that on social media and show that you are a real business and you're doing real things and you're getting real results you can also do this with friends and also acquaintances of yours. If it's appropriate, coworkers, let them know that you are building your massage business and you would love to work on them. It could be 30 minutes, it could be an hour, it could be 45 minutes in exchange for a review. So that is something I recommend if you're kind of in the beginning stages of building your practice. Those are some ways you can get some really awesome testimonials before you even start. So if I gave you some ideas for some content pillars, I'd love for you to comment down below. What are your content pillars? What are some of the cornerstone pieces of content that you're gonna start creating for your spa. Comment it down below. So the next tip that I have for you is to start being social. What is the point of social media if you're not actually connecting and socializing with other people on social media? So some of the ways that you can do this, a really, really easy way is for example on Instagram. If you open Instagram and you go to the search bar, just type in your city. Type your city into the search bar and see who is posting under the the tag or the location of your city. See if you can find any micro influencers, any bloggers, any, let's see, magazine writers, podcasters in your area. Doesn't even have to be a professional person. You can find just random people with public accounts and then start engaging with their content. So that means liking their posts, commenting, following them, especially if they seem like a good prospect for your business. If they seem like they fit the type of client that you want to work with, then by by all means start engaging with their content because what will happen is once you start engaging in their content they're gonna get notifications from your business and more than likely the name of your business is gonna say massage in the title they're gonna see the word massage click on you check your content out see all your content pillars they are gonna see those testimonials they're gonna see those service demonstrations they're gonna see all your other content and then they're going to feel enticed to book a service with you so this leads to to the next sub tip, which is make sure that you make it clear that your DMs are open. This is a huge mistake that I see a lot of massage businesses and spa professionals making is saying that their DMs are closed because they don't wanna answer questions or they don't wanna to respond to messages. But 
even for myself, when I'm looking for a service such as my lashes or my hair or something beauty or body related, what I'm going to do if I have a question, I'm going to message them. I might ask them, hey, do you use sensitive lash glue or whatever the case may be? You might get a question asking what type of technique do you use or where are you located? You know, different questions like that. And you want to make sure that you're available to answer those questions because that's going to help connect you to a technically a lead in your business and help you to convert that lead into a client of yours. So you want to make sure your DMs are open. You want to make sure that when you have a caption in your content, you want to make sure you ask your audience a question. Even if you don't have an audience yet, it's good to get in the habit of asking a question, asking them what their thoughts are on the content. For example, if you post a service demonstration of you doing cupping and in the caption, you provide a little bit of information of why cupping is so beneficial for the body, you want to have in the caption, what are your questions about cupping? Have you ever had cupping before? Like encourage people to comment and connect with you and also encourage people to message you because oftentimes those messages can turn into appointments. It's happened for me multiple, multiple, multiple times, especially if I'm answering questions and you can take it up a notch and answer a question with a voice note. That's going to make your lead, your uh, prospective client feel even more special and feel like you know what you're talking about and feel more confident in booking with you. Another piece to being more social on social media and reaching out to people, engaging with other people, people in your area, because again, we're only trying to target people who live around us because we want them to get services from us. Another piece to connecting with your clients is to build trust. That's really what your Instagram or Facebook account is really there for. It's to build trust and consistency with people who are watching you, even if they're not following you, even if they're not liking your posts, they may have you saved, they may have sent your posts to someone that they know, and that's the type of content you want to create. You want to create content that will help build trust with someone to book with you online or give you a call to see about booking services. It's really just trust building. With this tip, I really want you to get out of your comfort zone and seek out people and locations that you want to sell your services in. And I want you to engage in content. I want you to be in the DMs. I want you to message people. And I want you to welcome prospective clients to message you because that's going to lead to building relationships with people and building that trust so that someone wants to book a service with you or refer you to someone who wants a service. So that is another great way to get started with building your social media presence. Okay, so another tip that I have for you is to start using your hashtags. So one of the biggest mistakes that I see massage therapists and estheticians making on social media is that they're using the wrong hashtags. They are using hashtags such as a massage therapist or massage student or or graduated massage or massage business. But when you think about it, when people are searching through hashtags, they're not typing in massage. They're not typing in massage business. More than likely, something that you can do instead is you can actually put the name of your city in the hashtag. That's gonna be more specific. Because if you just put massage business or you put a massage therapist, that's gonna be kind of international. That's gonna be anyone who has also put that hashtag. And people local to you are not looking for that. So instead, you can type in Atlanta athletes or Atlanta whatever football team you have or whatever campuses you have, whatever are the popular hashtags in your area. So something that you can do when it comes to hashtags hashtag research, if you're kind of thinking about what are some local hashtags that you can start using to start attracting people to you that live near you, something that you can do is start following people who are really active in your community and seeing what hashtags that they use to engage with their audience and who are they also following. So people like this could be, for example, the city that you live in, they likely have a magazine and that magazine likely has a social media account. You can look at their posts and see what type of hashtags they're using and also see the people who are following them because the people who are following them also live in your city and are interested in their content. So that is a way of doing some hashtag research. Other people like this might be even, you know, county officials or bloggers or even those little meme Instagram site that like are specific to a particular city. So those are some people that you can start following. So I highly suggest just setting some time aside to do that research for yourself to figure out what type of hashtags 
you should be using, what's popular in your area, and what are your ideal clients? What are the hashtags that they're using to connect with people? So that you can use those same hashtags. So at this point in the video, you might be wondering, okay, so I kind of have some tips on how to get started with building a social media presence. I understand why this is so important for marketing, but how do I actually create the content? And that's why I have this video here for you to watch where I show you and demonstrate how you're gonna create content for your spa. So go ahead and check out that video, comment down below what your takeaways are for this video and if there should be a part two, if you wanna see more in-depth trainings about how to use social media to your advantage for your spa business. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.